Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and welcome Mr. Samajit Singh, international motivation speaker. Sir is a certified NLP and he is an international motivate, motivational speaker who has spoken with more than 200 groups from CEOs to young professionals and students from more than 80 nationalities. Also, Sir has a discussion in settings ranging from small strategy meetings to retreats student orientations and annual business conferences. So a big round of applause as we welcome Mr. Simarjeet Singh, the great motivational speaker from India. Put your hands together and a huge round of applause for sir. Good, great. Thank you for having me here. Dr. Vanita Kamran, where are you? Can't see you anywhere. But it's your love and affection that has brought me back here yet once again. I spoke here at the principals conference about three years ago. And um, the, the sort of affection and the love from the staff members and everyone is what has brought me back here today. So thank you, thank you, and thank you for having me here today. My goal in this session is to simplify quality, to simplify the basic concepts as I understand them, so that you can use them in your practical lives. So my congratulations to City Montessori School, first of all, on completing their wonderful 60 years. Give that a big round of applause, please, of their diamond jubilee. Thank you, I must say, for bringing the concepts of uh, quality management out of factories. That's what quality management, that's where it first originated. Edward Deming perhaps went to Japanese factories and started total quality management. And thank you for bringing it out of factories into schools, because Here's the important thing, cars don't change the world. <laughs> I think Elon Musk would disagree with that. Cars don't change the world, young people do, yes or no? Yes, and that's, that's the whole. So thank you for bringing the concepts of quality management outside of factories into classrooms among young people. So this is where we begin with our first interaction. Take a deep breath in please everyone. That's right, for real. Inhale, hold your breath for a few seconds, exhale, shake someone's hand on your right and left, look them in the eye and remind them you can change the world. Say it now please. Say it now please. Shake someone's hand on your right and left, look them in the eye and say to them, you, I don't hear you, you can change the world. That's the first reminder. That's right. Thank you. So when I saw the invitation from Dr. Kamran, it had some very powerful words that I wanted to highlight, which are also the basis of my keynote here today. She talked about culture, right? It's one of the most important building blocks of anything. She talked about changes at the grassroots level. You, we must understand this. Culture is not something that is isolated from us. Agree, disagree? We are active participants in shaping culture. When, when experts study culture, they talk about three levels of culture. How many? I don't hear you. How many? Three. Level one of culture is the posters on the wall. What's it called? Posters on the wall. The things we like to espouse, we talk about them. Level two of culture is what management talks about, what we preach. So what is level one of culture? Posters on the wall. Level two, what we talk about, what we preach. However, Experts also agree the most powerful impact of culture is it's called the thing, the way we do things around here. What's it called? The way we do things around here. That is the third level of culture and that is more powerful. Even more powerful than the posters on the wall. Look around you please. There's many wonderful posters on the wall. That's level one of culture. We've had wonderful speakers here today. That is level two of culture. And level three is the way we do things around here. How many of you have ever done something in your life which was against your values, but you did it because everyone else was doing it? Raise your hands, please. Yeah, because everybody else was doing it. It suddenly made it acceptable that I can do it too. Right. How many of you have ever been influenced by someone to do the right thing just by observing them? Raise your hands. They didn't give you a lecture. You saw them doing the right thing and you followed. And that, my friends, is the power of culture. When you have a culture of quality, you create a system which sustains, which does what? I don't hear you. Which does what? Sustains conferences, conventions and lectures. They ignite. They do what? Ignite. 
what is the way things are done there that is going to be the key factor in determining whether the new things that you're bringing to the table will they be sustained or not right and social proof like what other people are doing around you has a huge huge impact on what you do I'm just going to play a brief video look very carefully on the screen this was a social experiment done somewhere in the United States I believe what they did was they took 12 people 12 people were hired by a company to stand a particular way in the elevator okay one member of the public how many just one member of the public who doesn't know what's going on who doesn't know there's an experiment that's happening who doesn't know there's a hidden camera will walk into that ele elevator unsuspecting now these 12 people will stand in a particular way in the elevator and all i want you to observe is the impact on the one member of public which is just there by watching and observing these 11 peoples which will make it very clear to you the impact of what i'm talking about which is the word culture so he doesn't know what to do now and one two and three and there he goes he moves we've all done this yes or no this is the power of uh, ripple effects. What is it? Ripple effects. Please shake someone's hand on your right and left once again and remind them quality acts create ripple effects. Say it now, please. Quality acts. I don't hear you. Quality acts create ripple effects. That's what they do, right? And this is the whole spirit. So the basic question we need to ask is, what will I do today? What is the simple quality act that I will do today, which can create a ripple effect, right? Moving from theory to practice. And it's the small things. Quality is not only about strategy or something big. It's the small actions. Young people have even forgotten how to make eye contact now, thanks to technology. <laughs> We've changed that a little bit. And you see how the quality of when you meet someone, and if you're looking them in the eye, if you give them eye contact, how much of a different impact it's going to have. Let's try this. Deep breath in, please, once again. And shake someone's hand on your right and left. Look them in the eye and just smile at them. Say nothing. Just look them in the eye. Make eye contact, please. Fantastic. It's small acts of quality which change the world. Small acts of quality. The hotel that I'm staying in is just like any other building. Except there's two, three things which make a difference. Number one, is the people who work there. So last night when I was about to check in, it was a bit chaotic, but one person took charge of the entire situation and helped me to check in into that room. My idea of the quality of that hotel will not be based on the bricks or mortar or the elevators or other things, but on the quality of the people. It's the people who make a difference. It's the individuals who make a difference. And there were so many indoor plants in, the, in everywhere in that hotel. Now, do you, is, is that mandatory to have indoor plants in a hotel? Yes, no? Yes, no? Is it compulsory? No, it's not. It's someone going the extra mile. It's someone passionate about something. And it's someone paying attention to the small things. Quality lies in the details, in the attention to details. I mean, even if there would not be any indoor plants, I'd be pretty happy about the quality of the, uh, the entire accommodation. But it's the small additional thing that someone has done somewhere. You know, talk about culture. I'm reminded of a famous experiment of a story. Would you like to listen to a story? Some of you are not sure, so I'll just move on with the slides. Yes? So this story is about, it's called the Five Monkeys Experiment, and it's about culture. How many of you have heard about it? The Five Monkeys Experiment. No? Okay, great. So here's what a psychologist did. He took how many monkeys? Five monkeys, put them in a cage, put a ladder there and hung some bananas. Okay? Now, default, whenever a monkey sees bananas, what are they going to do? They're going to jump and reach out for it. Yes or no? Now, in order to condition the monkeys, what they've done is, they've put a, uh, a jet of spray of cold water and they've decided whenever any monkey is going to reach out for the bananas, they're going to do two things. Number one, they're going to punish the monkey who's jumping and reaching out for the bananas. Number two, not only him, but everybody else will also be sprayed with freezing cold water. You get the idea? Yes? So as soon as the five monkeys are brought in, they see bananas, and what are they going to do? 
they're going to jump and grab them. And what is the experiment, uh, ex the person who's conducting the experiment, what is he or she going to do? Spray everybody with cold water. Okay? So this happens once. Talking about culture here. And this happens twice. They're all freezing. They're confused. They're hungry. They can see bananas and yet they cannot go and grab them. Right? So if this time another one is trying to reach out. And an interesting thing happens. The others stop him, they grab him and they beat him up. So what has now happened is, despite bananas in front of them, none of the monkeys will reach out for bananas. So far so good? The experiment gets interesting at level 2, where they remove one of the original monkeys, the one out of the five, and they bring in a newcomer. Yeah? A newcomer to the group, who has no idea about what's happening here, what is the culture of this place, how they do things around here. So as soon as he comes in, he's all very happy, he's excited, he's eager, he's motivated. What does he do? What would he do? Jump and grab the bananas. Now, interesting thing. The other four monkeys come in, they gang up on him, they beat him up and they say, no, don't do that again. Now, this guy's confused. But the group is against him. With me so far? Right? And the impact of the group is, he said, okay, fine. You don't want me to grab the bananas? I won't do it. So he sits there quietly. The next level, hello, can I have your attention please? Yeah. The next level of the experiment gets even better. They replace the second mon monkey from the old group, bring in another newcomer. Okay, what's happened now? A second newcomer has come in who doesn't know. He comes in, he's all excited about the bananas, he goes out to reach for the bananas. What's going to happen? All of them again gang up on him and beat him up. What is interesting is, the monkey who just arrived before him, who had no clue why he got beat up, also joins in and beats up this monkey. This is how culture takes shape. And you have the power, every single one of us has the power by doing things differently to set a new trend, to start something new. To not be a prisoner of the past, to understand, to question the relevance of something. And that's how we bring in quality. Because if you do what you've always done before, what are you going to get? The same results which you always had in the past. Yes, no? Yes? But to, in order to get new results, you must do what? Take new actions. I call it, um, to give you an example, a person who's trying to lose weight, how many people here ever tried doing that, losing weight? Now, if you follow the same practices, your diet remains the same, your fitness activities remain the same. If all the inputs, hello, all the, I don't hear you, all the inputs remain the same, the outputs will not change. This is once again a deep breath moment and give a high five to the person sitting next to you and remind them to change the outputs, change the inputs. Say it now, please. To change the outputs, change the inputs. It's as simple as that. It is no rocket science. Have you heard of the Punjabi dieting plan? How many people in this house have heard about the Punjabi dieting plan? For my friends who are not familiar with Punjabis, we're the community who's thinking about food always. At breakfast, we're thinking about lunch. At lunch, we're thinking about dinner. Uh, you know, so we're always on to the next meal. The Punjabi dieting plan, uh, talking about inputs must change in order for outputs to change. The Punjabi dieting plan starts with very healthy in the morning at 7 a.m., you know, almonds soaked in water, honey, lemon, all the healthy stuff, detox. At 11 o'clock, there's a nice sandwich, healthy salad and everything. By 1, 1.30, it's baked fish, very calorie conscious so far. 4 o'clock is nice masala tea, again watching the calories. The Punjabi dieting plan, the trouble begins at 7 p.m., 7-ish, 7, 7, 7.30, where the default activation begins. And then, so it's called taking four steps forward and three steps backward, right? So at 8 o'clock, it's the chicken tikka masala. It's 9 o'clock, it is a butter naan. At 11 o'clock, it's Johnny Walker Black Label and so many other things. And then the cycle begins again next morning. <laughs> And the next morning, it starts all over again. I don't call that progress. Is that progress? Yes or no? 
that's not progress that's called going four steps forward and three steps backward that is not progress progress in order for outputs to change inputs must change and that is you know for quality of life how many of you would like to change the quality of your life raise your hands please improve the quality of your life keep your hands up in the air how many of you are willing to pay the price for that thing please understand the simple thing quality is not free you with me on this quality is not free it will demand a price and the higher the quality you expect the higher the price you must pay that's applicable for the brands you buy and for the life you live i met a young gentleman yesterday while transiting at the airport who works at the airport lounge 10 hour shifts how many hours a day 10 hours he is living in new delhi so take into account the traffic and the commuting and all other things and he was very well built nice handsome young man so i asked him i said do you work out every day do you go to the gym every day he said uh, sir in fact i go to the gym twice a day twice a day that is despite 10 hour shifts working in the hospitality industry which is very intensive as you know and new delhi's commute if you commit to something you make it happen otherwise it's all sweet talk right you've got to commit to quality in order for you to generate new results quality effects create quality acts create ripple effects and ripple effects shape culture and that is largely happening due to the have you heard of this have you heard of mirror neurons so here's the research they asked people to do an experiment for seven days do an act of kindness for a random stranger what was the experiment an act of kindness for a random stranger and what they observed people's level of happiness went up but what they also observed the people who were just observing people who were just observing this give and take of kindness their level of happiness also went up and that is your mirror neurons which means you have the power to create change if you bring in positive energy to something thanks to your mirror neurons you begin to change other people if you begin anger into a conversation or something like that thanks to your mirror neurons you have the ability to change that too it's how you feel quality is who you are take a deep breath in please once again and remind the person sitting next to you once again quality is who you are say it now please quality is who you are it's not the message you preach it's not what you talk about it is the life that you live it's who you are so I can't go too far away from the laptop because this thing stops working and quality depends upon choices small insignificant holding the door open is an act of quality yes or no for the person behind you small things Looking at people in the eye, making eye contact when someone's trying to have a conversation with you is quality, yes or no? Yes. These are the small things. My friends, if you get the big things wrong, you're out of the game anyway, yes or no? Some of you are not sure. If you get the big things wrong, you're out of the game. But it's when you do the small things right, that's when you win the game of quality. Quality depends upon choices. Or as J.K. Rowling said in Harry Potter, he said, Harry, it's not as much as your ability, but the choices you make that reveal to the world who you truly are, not your ability. And I'm confident this youngsters here with tremendous ability in this room. Yes or no? Some of you are not sure. So look around you, please. Take a look around. Take a look around in this room. There could be future entrepreneurs, future political leaders, future sports persons, business persons, celebrities, speakers. But it's not as much as your ability, but your choices. And in the long run, people who make the right choices are going to win. And they go even, they're going to beat ability. Choices beat talent. Please keep this in mind. Choices beat talent talent you may be very talented but if you're not making the right choices and the thing about quality is these are self-imposed choices what are they self-imposed look at this video which i'm going to play for you now it was shot at heathrow airport a baggage handler this video is about a 
Hello, can I have your attention, please? Is about a baggage handler, London Heathrow Airport. Now, no one's asked him. What you will see is turning every bag so the handle is facing towards the front. Just watch, and it was viral across the internet. Let's have a look at this video. The Chinese have a wonderful proverb. It says, only when a man decides to go the extra mile, only when a man or a woman decides to go the extra mile, which means do things which have not been asked from you, only then that person becomes a free person. Before that, he or she is just a slave. Before that, you're just a slave. If you're doing and giving to the world only as much as been asked from you, you're a slave. To become a free person, you must go the extra mile. And that really is the whole spirit of living a quality life and making a quality impact on someone else. One of the most important concepts in this whole conversation about a, about a quality life is going to be learn to say no. This is once again a hello moment. Deep breath in, please. Once again, a high five to the person sitting next to you and remind them you must learn to say no. Say it now, please. You must learn to say no. If you're saying yes, 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 yes to everything, you will not be able to lead a quality life. Does that make sense? Especially my young students here. You know, you're so gullible, you're so vulnerable to so many things. There are, you get aggressive, please. Get clear and get assertive about saying no to things which do not, which are not in harmony with your values. You will offend a few people in the short run, but in the long run, you will be laying the foundation of a strong life. Learn to say no. Deep breath in, please. Everybody say out loud, I will get comfortable at saying no. You might offend a few people and that's okay. That's part of the deal. If you say yes to everything, you will compromise your values, you will compromise who you really are. And know your enemy in this whole conversation about quality, know your enemy. All of this looks very good right here on the stage, on my presentation and theoretically. Leading a quality life is very difficult because you must pay the price. And that's what majority of people don't want to do. We want to delegate everything. Yes, no. You, you, you wish someone else can do something for you and you will have the results. Is that possible? I don't care how rich, powerful or influential you are. You cannot hire someone else to do your push-ups for you. Does that make sense? <laughs> you cannot hire someone else to do your push-ups for you. There are some things that only you and you must do. That bridge only you must cross. That price only you must pay and you must know your enemy. Any guesses what your enemy is in leading a quality life? Any guesses? Number one enemy? Sorry, what is that, ma'am? Resistance? Lazy? You know, I think you deserve a round of applause. You do. Right, now, look at the three symptoms of laziness. This board put up by someone. At the root cause of what you've called laziness is what neuroscientists call our lizard brain. What do they call it? Right? Will you all remember this? I want you to get the image of a dirty, slimy lizard in your head, green in color. And that's your number one enemy and it's part of your brain. It's always there. It's always there. Right? This is once again a deep breath moment. And say out loud, I will kill the lizard or I will suppress the lizard brain. You've got to win this battle. You have to. Keep a scorecard, please, daily. I'm asking you to keep a quality scorecard in which it is you against the lizard. The battle is between you against your lizard brain. Now, let me tell you what your lizard brain does to you. It stops you from taking action. You meet someone new and you want to say hello and you want to introduce, make a new quality connection. You should be doing that, right? 
but your lizard brain will tell you shut up and sit down don't take a chance let somebody else initiate the conversation you missed out the opportunity to make a new contact you see five people sitting in a nice Audi A6 and they have their butter chicken and they threw the thing outside you feel the instinct to go pick it up and put it in the dustbin yes no you feel that instinct but you say come on Mere akele karne se kya hoga? what difference is it going to make and you say forget it you missed an opportunity you know what's working there what is working lizard brain as part of the evolution process the lizard brain is there to preserve us so it will force you it will ask you not to take any risks but quality acts are acts of courage can i hear that from the audience please quality acts are acts of courage and the lizard is fighting against you so keep a scorecard daily if you wanted to get up at 6 a.m in the morning but you got up at 7 put in the scorecard lizard one and your name zero right keep a scorecard daily to see who's winning Be become more powerful because you want to see the impact of the lizard brain on your life so this is how it looks like this is someone working with their lizard brain familiar does it look familiar the other impact the more modern impact the best diet for the lizard brain is any guesses my young students the best diet for the lizard brain is social media mm -hmm. social media it is going to give you an illusion of achievement This, this whole social media business, it is giving you an illusion. It's doing what? It's creating an illusion that by posting something on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, you're actually changing the world. Yes, no. This is the illusion we are living in. You guess how long the life is of a, even if a tweet, tweet is going viral, how long the life of that tweet is? half an hour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and then it disappears into cyberspace forever. Spending time on social media, don't confuse it. It is the illusion of achievement. It is not actual achievement in itself. Get out of this trap and do something real because a quality impact will have ripple effects forever and ever in this universe, even if it's so small, right? So this is the number one illusion and the number two illusion is the illusion of knowledge. The number two is illusion of knowledge. The lizard brain will keep telling you, it will tell you, you see, you're not qualified enough yet to make a difference. You should study more, maybe get a doctorate, maybe write a thesis about it with due respect to the doctorates in the room. There is a threshold for knowledge, my friends. Please understand that. There is a threshold, which means to a certain degree, you need knowledge and information and data and facts. Yes, no. But beyond it, it is time for action. Beyond it, it's time for action. And if you don't translate your knowledge into action, it is meaningless. The whole exercise becomes meaningless. You see, you cannot lose weight by buying more books on dieting. You just can't do that. It's another illusion. It's a billion dollar illusion. Billions of dollars of books are sold every year on how to lose weight. There's always next shortcut. Uh, this is again a reminder message to the person sitting next to you. Do it often, please. Deep breath in and shake the hand of someone on your right and left and remind them there are no shortcuts to quality. Say it now, please. I don't hear you. There are no shortcuts to quality and you must fall in love with the process you want to lead a quality life yes fall in love with the process more than the outcome and that is what is exactly written in the Bhagavad Gita do not be overly attached to the fruits of your outcome but be more attached to the process of what you're doing if you enjoy the process the results are going to 
surpass your expectations so you don't need a whole lot of knowledge you need some knowledge and then you need action and you don't need to be highly educated for that this man on the screen that you see here is called the tree man of India go and look him up on YouTube from a barren piece of land his island in Assam any students from Assam here raise your hands please anyone from Assam his island was disappearing due to soil erosion and they predicted he said it's going to vanish in a, in a decade or so you know what his answer was what was the prediction by the way that your home is going to disappear in a decade you know what his answer was he said ye hum nahi hone denge that was his answer i will not let it happen this is my home 1979 he started planting one tree a day fast forward to 2019 it is a forest of 13000 hectares 13000 hectares a winner of the padma shri now this is where your knowledge comes into action heed the words of emerson who said uh, an ounce of action what did emerson say an ounce of action is worth more than a ton of theory repeat after me please an ounce of action is worth more than a ton of theory learn to take action that's when you change the world remember we started this keynote by reminding each other you have the power to take change the world yes no Yes so the closing message is once again deep breath make eye contact and remind them take action say it now please take action because without action it's all useless heard of this woman here on the screen according to our definition of literacy she would be considered illiterate but she received the padma shri award once again from the honorable president of india for her efforts they couldn't they couldn't have any children in the family so they decided to plant trees and a whole highway on the bangalore stretch is trees 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 everywhere take action whether it's in the world of environmental protection or in the world of business how many of you know this young man i would be interested of many people okay listen carefully he is the owner of the worlds not india's of the world's largest hotel company now it is called oyo rooms his name is ritesh agarwal at the age of 23 he was leading teams of managers who were from harvard and stanford and isb and iims and he was a school dropout now that's not what i'm asking you to do by the way <laughs> don't get me wrong that's not what i'm asking you to do but i'm making it sufficiently clear nothing changes until you take action at the age of 13 he was selling sim cards if you take an opportunity if you find an opportunity to make a difference grab it please he went into a hotel once medium segment is launched into north america and europe and everywhere across the world interesting part my friends he does not own a single room his software platform is an aggregator of hotel rooms of hotel rooms which would not sell before due to poor quality So he went into those hotels he taught them branding and the basic levels of quality and he gave them a brand which is called Oyo Hotels and added billions of dollars of value in the process at 23 this young very casually dressed guy is a billionaire you think these people care about results you think they are driven by results yes no they're not they love the process and that's my message to you take a deep breath in please love the process and the outcomes will exceed your expectations now before i go these lines from the famous poet, uh, nobel laureate india's famous poet rabindranath tagore about taking action can i have your attention please he said spring has passed summer has gone winter is here and the song that i meant to sing you all have a song inside you yes no you're not sure 
you have a song inside your heart that you came into this world you want to sing that song yeah listen to these lines by Rabindranath Tagore spring has passed summer has gone winter is here and the song that I wanted to sing remains unsung because I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument because I have spent my days stringing and unstringing my instrument I've spent my days calibrating my instrument sing your song please the world needs to hear it sing your song what will you commit to that is the question take your ideas into action you've all been a wonderful audience here I thank you very much once again for having me here today thank you so very much my apologies to the next speaker for having taken more than the time that was allocated to me. Uh, once again, City Montessori School, Dr. Kamran, Dr. Gandhi, and to this wonderful staff who are looking amazing in their saris. Give them a round of applause, please. Thank you. The people behind the scenes of making this happen, this wonderful day happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A big round of applause once again. It was truly enjoyable, gripping, electrifying, magnetic, whatever you can say. And we are so fortunate to have Sir here. And we are really too grateful to our founders, to our respected, both the principals and all the organizers to having, for having Sir here on stage. And we got such beautiful lessons of life, making our life a better life. And really, Sir, I love those deep breaths moment. And we are going to take them into our classrooms and practice with the students. So many lessons to learn. I can't take it. I've wrote down so many lessons which you have given. But definitely, you have to take action. You have to take action, then only we'll have quality. So again, a big round of applause for Sir. And I would request Sir Jeff Diwar to present a memento to Mr. Simajit Singh. Big round of applause for Sir Jeff Diwar. Definitely, world is not changed by your opinion, but by your example. Many lessons we have taken back. Many lessons we are going to uh, give to our students and definitely implement in our own lives. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for being here.